to Dayon Rappler. The Supreme Court dismisses anti-graph court Justice Gregory Ong for links to Janet Napolis. A United Nations report shows only a third of Filipinos have access to the internet. And the United States and its Arab allies launch strikes against ISIS. Hello, I'm Natasha Gutierrez. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Supreme Court dismisses anti-graft court Justice Gregory Ong for his links with alleged public fund scam mastermind Janet Napolis. In its en banc session, the court voted 8-5-2, declaring Sandigan Bayan Justice Ong guilty of gross misconduct, dishonesty, and impropriety. Rappler exposed Ong's links to Napolis in August 2013 at the height of the scandal that became the worst corruption case in recent history. Rappler asked Ong to look at a photo showing him with Napolis and Senator Jingoy Estrada. He denied knowing Napolis. Napolis allegedly diverted lawmakers' discretionary funds, better known as the pork barrel, to bogus nonprofit foundations she controlled. In 2010, the Sindigan Bayan division chaired by Ong acquitted Napolis in a Kevlar helmet case. Ong's name surfaced in various affidavits whistleblowers Ben Herloy and Marina Sula submitted to the Senate. The decision affirms the recommendation made by retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Angelina Gutierrez, who in 2013 was tasked to probe Ong's involvement with Napolis. As part of the investigation, Gutierrez summoned Ong and other personalities who could shed light on the case. Sources say Ong denied any wrongdoing but admitted knowing Napolis. Gutierrez's investigation concluded Ong was Napolis' main contact at the Sandigan Bayan. Ong forfeits all his retirement benefits. Transportation Secretary June Abayo on Tuesday dismisses the possibility of the Liberal Party fielding a presidential candidate other than Interior Secretary Mar Rojas in the 2016 polls. Rojas trails behind opposition candidate Vice President Judge Mar Binay in presidential surveys. Rojas was also slated to run in the 2010 presidential polls but gave way to Aquino. Rojas ran for vice president but lost to Binay. Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOLC, senior volcanologist Edi Laguerta called for caution Monday, despite a lull in Mayon Volcano. Laguerta recalled in the past that there was a decrease in seismic activity for a few days, even weeks, before the big eruption began. FIVOLC says, quote, even the rockfall event stops this stops. This is just a process of Mayon relaxation before a full-blown eruption, a pattern similar to the 2000 and 2001 explosions with pyroclastic flow. Mayon Volcano's seismic network recorded at least three volcanic earthquakes and 13 rockfall events in the past 24 hours. The volcano's alert status stands at alert level 3. Albay Governor Joey Salceda banned all human activity in a 6-kilometer permanent danger zone called No Man's Land to prevent casualties. The Manila International Airport Authority, or MIAA, said Monday the integration of terminal fees into the cost of airline tickets will push through as scheduled on October 1. The Transportation Department announced the integration of the International Passenger Service Charge, or terminal fee, back in June. It also instructed the Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority, the Clark International Airport Corporation, and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines to implement the new rule. MIAA says the 550 peso terminal fee is essential to the continued operations of the airport. Exempt from terminal fees are Philippine Overseas Employment Administration certified Filipino workers, pilgrims sponsored by the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, athletes endorsed by the Philippine Sports Commission, and others authorized by the Office of the President. Despite being dubbed the social networking capital of the world, a United Nations report shows only a third of Filipinos have access to the internet. The 2014 edition of the State of Broadband report shows only 37% of Filipinos were able to use the internet in 2013. The number is below the world average of 37.9%. It tracks the Philippines 106th out of the, one, out of the 191 countries evaluated in the report. Four countries part of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations beat the Philippines in terms of internet penetration. Singapore ranks 35th with a 73% internet penetration, followed by Malaysia at number 45, Brunei Darussalam at number 51, and then Vietnam at rank 89. 
Early this year, a report showed the Philippines has a general internet speed of around 3.55 Mbps, ranking 155th among 190 countries. For our social media post of the day, mall chain SM is under fire for selling shirts with a statement, It's not rape, it's a snuggle with a struggle, printed in front. Writer Karen Kunawich posted on Facebook a photo of the shirt Monday. Her anger over the statement echoed by hundreds of netizens. Filipinos Online accused SM's management of propagating sexism and a rape culture. Some comments demand the shirts be pulled from circulation. Apologizing and calling it unacceptable, the largest mall chain in the country responded by pulling out the t-shirts. But netizens remain angry. The World Health Organization says the Ebola outbreak is now contained in West African countries, Senegal and Nigeria. Senegal has not reported any new cases of the deadly virus since it registered its first and only case on August 29. And Nigeria, where eight died, has not reported any new cases since September 8. The deadly outbreak killed over 2,800 and infected more than 5,800 as of last Thursday. WHO says Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone account for most of the cases by far. The United States and Arab allies launched strikes from air, land and sea against militants from the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or ISIS Tuesday. The U.S. Central Command says Arab states Bahrain, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, Emirates joined the U.S. in its war against the brutal jihadist group. The coalition conducted a total of 14 strikes against ISIS targets in Syria, destroying command centers and armed vehicles in the jihadists' stronghold. The U.S.-guided missile cruiser USSS Philippine Sea also launches land attack missiles against ISIS targets. The U.S.-led assault marks a turning point in the war against ISIS, which seized swathes of territories in Iraq and Syria and declared an Islamic caliphate. The U.S. was initially reluctant to intervene in Syria's raging civil war. ISIS atrocities, including the on-camera beheadings of three Western hostages, triggered U.S. action. ISIS militants on Monday warned the U.S.-led campaign would be met with a harsh response. Monitoring group Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says at least 20 militants were killed. The new strikes came less than two weeks after U.S. President Barack Obama approved an expansion of the campaign against ISIS. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, British Muslims are using social media to counter the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or ISIS or ISIS. Idol, or ISIS's idol, ideology of hate. London-based Active Change Foundation, or ACF, urges Muslims to use the hashtag NotInMyName on Twitter to denounce the violence of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS. ISIS has been using social media to recruit followers. It has recently beheaded two American journalists and a British aid worker. At number 7, former U.S. State Secretary Hillary Clinton expresses distress over how hard change comes in terms of women's income. Last week, figures showed that American women's income compared to that of men increased slightly, pushing them up 70 cents on the dollar. Referring to the gender pay gap, Clinton, who may yet again vie to become the U.S.'s first female president, said the cultural and religious, and religious obstacles based on views of women's roles and capacities are not only wrong, but also no longer affordable. And at number 10, in Greece, archaeologists discover the largest burial site, which dates back to the late 4th century BC. Greek culture minister Konstantinos Tasoulas tells BBC, the Greeks are awestruck over the magnificent magnificence of the tomb. Archaeologists say it might be a nobleman's grave. Experts, however, have yet to reach a verdict. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. Daniel Parantak gives the Philippines its first medal in the 2014 Asian Games in Incheon, South Korea. He bags the silver for the Wushu Men's Tajikwan event Tuesday. The 23-year-old Baguio native finished with a score of 9.68. Parantak, Parantak was a recipient of the Athlete of the Year Award at the 2013 Kafagwai Sports Achievers Awards. He won the bronze medal for the same Tajikwan event during the 2013 World Championships in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 
The Philippines is assured of at least a silver medal in Sanda Wushu as Jean-Claude Saklag defeats India's Narendra Grual 2-0 to advance to the finals. In basketball, Gilas Pilipinas opens the ASEAN campaign with an 85-76 win over India. Marcus Dauthit and Jeff Chan both score 14 points to lead six Gilas players in double figures. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. A quick look at the mood navigator shows four different colors. Let's see, let's start with this purple one on the left. UP students on Abad, we will never apologize, has 49% of readers feeling annoyed, while 26% are angry. Okay, how about this lone blue circle to the right? UN, only 37% of Filipinos have internet access. This was a story on today's newscast. This has 62% of people feeling sad, 18% are angry, while 5% say they're amused. And right in the middle, a big red circle, Aegis, sorry for Malaysia marketing ad. This ad criticized the Philippines as an investment, as a place to invest. This has 83% of readers feeling angry, while 6% say they're annoyed. All these stories contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are angry. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, September 23, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.